In the race for Congress, the big issue, fighting gun violence. Debbie Halverson and Toy Hutchinson both earned an A from the NRA. They can't be trusted. The clear choice, Robin Kelly, endorsed by the Chicago Tribune. Integrity, pragmatism, works hard. Kelly will join President Obama to take on the NRA for effective background checks and to ban deadly assault weapons. Robin Kelly for Congress, a champion in the fight against gun violence. Independence USA PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. That ad from Michael Bloomberg's Super PAC, we are told, is inescapable these days in Illinois. We're having earned an A rating from the NRA is becoming more of a scarlet letter than an endorsement to be proud of. The PAC ad is running, uh, that, that PAC is running that ad against two Democrats with A ratings from the NRA and in support of a Democrat who got an F from the NRA. This, this Illinois special election, the first congressional contest since what happened at Sandy Hook Elementary last month, uh, happens just a week from Tuesday. Joining us now is Chris Hayes, the host of Up With Chris Hayes, weekend mornings at 8 here on MSNBC. Chris, it is great to see you as always. Always great to see you. Did you ever think that you would live to see the day that an A rating from the NRA would be an albatross for politicians? You know, the weird part of it is I saw that day when I was 13 years old or 14 years old when there was this period the Million Mom March, the assault weapons ban, when this kind of thing was good politics for Democrats and the Democratic Party leaned into it. And then there was this long period of exile. There was a backlash. There was a story that was told, I think somewhat implausible, about how Al Gore lost his home state of Tennessee because of his support for the assault weapons ban in 2000. And basically, Democrats completely gave up on the issue. And they allowed this mythology to take hold that the way that your median gun owner in rural Oklahoma feels about guns is the way that the median voter yes. feels about guns and the way that voters everywhere around the country feel about guns. And what Bill Clinton and the Democratic Party discovered when the issue was working in their favor in the mid-1990s was that there are lots of constituencies in the country that don't feel that way about guns. Mm -hmm. And I actually think certain things on the ground have changed. Obviously, Newtown changed things. Certain things about the demographic coalition that makes up the Democratic Party have changed. But in some ways, they're recovering lost knowledge from a previous generation of Democrats that actually did know this back in the mid-1990s. Do you think they are also recognizing that it's not just the median gun owner in Oklahoma doesn't represent the country as a whole, but also the pro the the statements of the National Rifle Association Absolutely. do not even represent the beliefs of the standard National yep. Rifle Association member. I mean, there is also this yep. uh, dysmorphia between who speaks on the issue and who has strong feelings about the issue. I am now forever going to conjure the image of Wayne LaPierre when I hear the word dysmorphia, which is not that often, <laughs> but it actually is sort of perfectly in cap captures Wayne LaPierre. No, that's exactly right. And that actually has gotten worse, right? I mean, one of the perverse consequences of Republican conservative victory on guns is that the NRA increasingly has to had to justify its existence. Yeah. They have a very big, fancy headquarters outside Washington. You see it when you drive into the city. They raise a lot of money. And there's no battles to fight. I mean, there literally have been no battles for them to fight. So they have had to pick increasingly extreme battles, stand your ground laws, telling doctors that they cannot talk to gun owners about the storage of their guns in their homes when they have little children, which is the legislative fight they picked in Florida, right? They have had to get more extreme in order to justify their existence in an era in which no one is fighting them on a national political level. Yeah. And that has produced this very perverse set of values, beliefs, and stated principles that is the modern NRA. And that shows the distance between what their membership believes is reasonable gun law and what they have to advocate. Right. So but there, the thing that there's two things going on here. One is that Republicans or Democrats are feeling their oats in terms yep. of making this an issue and holding people accountable for having taken the other side on gun rights. But the other thing that's happening now is divestment. Yep. And I have always believed that the NRA functions as a heat shield for the manufacturers. The whole idea was that the gun manufacturers are like, we never want to end up in Congress the way the tobacco CEOs did. You are going to have to be a magnet for yep. media attention and all of the anger over this so that everybody always wants to hear from you and they never even get right. curious about us. Does divestment change that? I think it does. And part of the reason is... Um, it is the pension funds that are the big money, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and we saw it with CalPERS. We're seeing now Bill de Blasio spearheaded the New York City effort. That's a lot of money. I mean, pension funds are the big money on Wall Street, right? And Cerebus got very worried when the pension funds, when CalPERS started making noises about this. So A, it does change it. And I think it also changes it in precisely the way you're, you're 
illustrating, which is that it puts the emphasis and focus back on the gun manufacturers themselves. And the dirty secret of the gun market right now is there are two lines that go in opposite directions. The percentage of households that own guns is going down, and the number of guns in the country is going up. Yep. A smaller group of people are buying more and more guns, which means the manufacturers themselves have the same incentives of Wayne LaPierre, which is to cater to the most extreme obsessive gun acquirers, because that is where their market is, and those are the people whose views are the most outside the mainstream, and that makes them politically toxic if they step forward. And that makes them not a great thing to have hanging around your neck if you are running in a general election. That's exactly right. Democratic That's exactly primary. right because it's increasingly it. a kind of like hobby, hobbyist, fetishistic yes. kind of audience. It's not your casual person who may own one shotgun. That's not where the growth in the industry is. The growth in the industry are people who own 12 guns. Right. And the latest stuff from the NRA, the latest stuff from Wayne LaPierre is it's not paranoid to stock. That's right. Because it's catering be to those race people. Riots. That's There's right. going to be hurricanes. Looting everywhere in the era of climate disaster. That's my favorite, right? Like as climate disaster hits, you know, everyone's going to be like marauding through the streets like some dystopic video game. And so if you already have guns, you definitely need more. 20 more. Yeah.